Let us think. Well, one thing to think about here is let's have another debate about naming conventions. Or not naming conventions, but about coding conventions. And specifically around um, Hold on. It's in here somewhere. Yeah. Login view state. So we've got a data class here. That's our email and our password. Now, the question. There's a debate oftentimes about view states being data classes or sealed classes. Um, because here, if we consider all the information I would need, right? Well, we've got an email, we've got a password, we've got like show progress bar is something we're going to need. Um, we're going to need to know if there's an error message. Um, right. Uh, in theory, we're going to have like, if we have an issue with a particular input, we could have like an email input error message. Um, we could have a password input error message, you know, and some people would say, well, now we're kind of encapsulating a lot of different view states inside one single data class. Um, and I guess that's bad. But on the other hand, do I really want like 10 million sealed classes that could define what the login view state looks like? I don't know. Um, what do you think, chat? In my mind, I want to stick with um, this. I like data classes, but um, just curious what other people think. I think I'm going to stick with data classes until it bothers me. Um, let's show a loading indicator on the screen. False otherwise. If supplied, the error message about trying to log in, or an error message um, blaming why a user could not log in. Um, if supplied, an error message explaining a problem with the email field. If supplied, an error message explaining a problem with the password input. Yeah, I like data classes too for this example as well because of the fact that you could have like a hybrid approach. So um, one thing people would say like, uh, let's say you are pulling data, right? And like, some would say that you can only show the loader or you can show your data. But what if you're refreshing? So then it makes sense to have a data class where you have like a list of items and a separate property that says show loading. But the alternative that some people suggest is, well, that's a third UI state called refreshing. And I'm like, I guess I get it there, but how many sealed classes are you going to end up with? Because how many different combinations of what's right here are we going to have? You know, um, all the different parameters of this could be pretty long. So I think we should go with this. Um, I'm actually also going to give these default values, even though I typically don't like to do that. I'm going to do that here. Um, but in addition to these, so there's a little more that I would do here. Um, namely, like, okay, um, let's consider error message. Um, I've got a lot to catch up. Right, so Tim brings up a valid point, which is the consequence of my decision is that by putting everything in a data class, I am opening myself up for a data class that represents a view state that should not be possible. So the question is, well, do we just solve that with very thorough testing, or do we take advantage of sealed classes 
which don't allow us to do that in the first place. And I think that that's kind of a personal decision. Um, yeah, so, like, Wild Dog is right. Um, like, that is the point of sealed classes, but... Um, everyone's voting with Tim tonight. Okay. I just, I don't, I don't like it. I don't know why. Let's, okay. Humor me, I'm going to keep this data class up here at the top. Humor me and help me think about, um, um, do data classes break single responsibility principle? I'm not sure they do in this case. Because it still has one responsibility, which is, tell me what the view state is. Right. Um, we're not really breaking responsibility here. But it's just not as strict. So, yep, we're still here. We're still here. We're, we're keeping it long today. Um, so... Okay, let's consider both. Let's write out a few sealed classes um, for the different states we could be. So I'm going to put it inside something. I'm going to call it login state. Uh, I prefer login view state, but this is just because I'm inside the same file here. Um, and it's worth asking, like, um, ah, got to hydrate. Cheers, bro. Okay, you guys are right. We can break it down. Okay, so then let's talk through how we could define it in a sealed class way. Well, the first question I would have is, is there any information that I think would be shared across every possible login state? And I actually think the answer to that is yes, because the... Username and the email and password fields are always visible, and their text is part of my view state. Whether I am in the initial state, whether I am logging in, whether I have an error, I care about what that text is. So I might regret this as we go, but I'm going to start by saying that you know, email and password or email and password should be or to be more specific, credentials um, are always here. That sounds interesting. I I think that it's generics and retro like with networking are really helpful. But yeah, they definitely make um, what these. They are not there initially. Are they not? They're just empty. Yes, you can get a quick recap on the UI. Um, that is a great, great suggestion. Matt out here with the big brain questions. It would make sense to look at the UI while defining the UI state, wouldn't it? Um, that would have been uh, really great. <laughs> I also just saw Matt's DM. That was fantastic. Okay. Um, so. You should know not to represent no data with an empty string. But it's, it is data in this case. Like, you just have chosen not to enter anything. Or, well, you just, for reasons, you have not entered anything. But, okay, so, all right, so let's, let's talk about it some more. Okay, I will once again humor Tim and start typing it out, even though he will probably be right. So, 
what do we want to call this? Initialized, initial, um, empty. What do we call what we're looking at? Login state that empty, initial, okay. Now, pretend I type shit in, which doesn't work because we haven't hooked up the UI. I've entered some information. I'm not clicking, I'm not logging in, right? Um, what do we call this? Inputting? I don't know. If we don't want to make it a verb, we can call it like input. That feels weird. Login state that input. Um, active. Oh, okay. Love it. Active. Okay. We're going to use our credentials sealed class here as well. Well, do we want to use credentials or do we want to split it up to email and password? Let's keep credentials. We keep one, one entity there. Okay. So we've got. Um, then let's consider I've pressed the button, and I'm logging in. Let's call that submitting. Now, here's where it gets interesting. When I am submitting. I still care about what your email and password are. So it's almost like I'm going to have the same thing. In submitting, I'm also going to have credentials. And to me, this starts to feel like I'm duplicating information, but you could also argue that I'm duplicating it necessarily. But I'm going to want to know your credentials in other cases, but let's keep going. So one that's different from, we've got two error states. Um, it is not explicitly MVI back, no. Um, maybe something we could modify in the future, but not something I did now. Um, so we've got two error states. We've got a <laughs> we've got a login error. Um, oh, all right. Hold on, we got more contentious stuff. Um, I can display the message as soon as the input field is updated. Focus and act to make sense. Oh my god. There's so there's so much going on here. Hold on. Um So WebShark, I think that uh to your point, like sealed classes, as far as I'm understanding them, they can work for all of these. Um but yeah, it just means you're going to have a lot of instances of that sealed class to represent everything. Uh, the the point now whether or not I agree with this is different. The point is that it's like type safety. It's like you have this extra layer of confirmation that you are expecting this specific state, and you're not allowing it to be like dirtied with any other flags or information. Um, okay. Let let me keep typing out some other things. So we've got um. We're going to have, what do I want to call this? Submission error? So this still has our credentials in it. But then we're also going to have an error message, which will be a string. This will be a login state. And then we could have um, an input error, which I'm not going to split, we'll say we'll have credentials. We could have email input error message, which would be a string, and a password input error message. And actually, let's make these nullable because 
we could have one input aired and not the other. Um, I really think that, like, I don't want to have email input error and password input error as separate view states. Because then I'm saying that there should really be three. Um, uh, so we'll have one for input error. Um, okay. But, chat. Sealed classes versus data classes aside, here's another question. How do I, what's the proper way to then handle something about the login UI that is based on this state? For example, let's say I want to, okay, I mean, that's right. This has come up a lot this stream that sealed classes have scalability benefits for sure because you just need to add a new entry to the sealed class and then all of your like when statements throughout the app and stuff um will like yell at you and you'll know exactly what needs to update but so here's my question let's say we have something about the ui that is um specific to a specific state like okay how do i explain this consider our two buttons when we are in the submitting state, I don't want those to be enabled. So, the question is, where does that logic live? Because we could put it, one could say that it could go and log in content, right? And then, like, we could say, you know, is enabled equals view state equal is submitting or something. And, like, that's fine, but isn't that logic inside the composable that shouldn't be there. Um, if that makes sense. Like so I'm just wondering if um like I'm gonna have the same problem with credentials that I explained to Tim earlier. Let me show you. Let's try to use our sealed class that we made. So Okay, so email input, it needs text. Every time I compose the screen, I need text. How do I get this? Right? That's why I was going back to saying, like, every state, no matter what, it needs to have the credential information. Because otherwise, I'm basically saying, like, if view state, view state dot initial or something. Like, well, you know what I mean? Like, I have this if statement here. I don't like that. I think that um, I do want to put credentials on the base sealed class. But let's ignore that for now, even. Because what I really want to work through is this idea. Um, so we don't have an enabled state on the button now. But let's let's say we want to do this. So we could have buttons enabled, right? This is a Boolean. And we're saying this is equal to um, login state equals login state dot, or whoops. Rather, this is view state is submitting. So this is how I would check if buttons were enabled. And I don't like this because I've kind of got this like domain logic inside um okay, but we're thinking of But the, so I'm expecting the way I typically design things, I'm expecting my view model to emit this. It's going to emit this login state. So where is that logic actually going to live then? 
right? Because my view model emits this, the login content consumes that. I expect this to tell me whether or not the buttons are enabled. Now, I suppose maybe breaking single responsibility principle, you know, if I do like, if I do it here, um, this technically works and my UI looks nicer, but now we're, we're, um, Oh, that makes a lot more sense, Raphael. That makes a lot more sense. You're right. Um, and then I can actually see how... Let me revert this class, by the way. Um, I can actually see how that would be really nice, especially if I move credentials up. So you're saying the same thing I was saying about credentials, is that... Um, words. Uh it's information that is always there, no matter what state we're in. So we could have, um, so we've got our credentials here, but then we've got buttons enabled. And so actually this, and then in each place we define it, we can specify that there. So here, uh, we'll give default credentials, um, and buttons enabled will be true. Um, let's, so active consumes credentials, we'll say credentials, um, now I'm looking at this and I'm starting to think that, um, initial and, okay, so I need, okay, I need override there. Why can't I do this? Credentials and login state is final and cannot be overridden. Then I guess I just can't. Okay. I, I'm going to make it open because I want those to be data classes. Um, ah, I'm glad you all are catching me up. I uh, also know this is yelling at me. I'll fix this later. Um, okay. Add override. Equals buttons enabled will be false. Can I do do default parameters work in data classes or in two classes? Ah, oh, they do. Great. Okay, so we can actually just not have to put the um, what should we call it? the button thing and all of them, except for the one that we care about changing it. So. Um, I'm not saving them in both. Well, okay, it's because when I create this, this is the constructor, right? This needs to consume some credentials. So, um, this needs to consume c some credentials, and then it's just getting passed into the parent constructor. Maybe this will make it a little more clear. If I do this, let's say active doesn't care about credentials, right? I can do this. I can just create a constructor for active that takes in credentials. Yeah, okay. You've, you've asked a great point. Let me give you the answer. When I do this, I've created a constructor that takes some credentials and passes them to the super constructor, and that's great. Now, let me ask you a question. If I want to write a unit test down the line that's expecting a certain view state, and I take and I create my own instance of an active state, and I compare it to what the view model says, will that test pass? And the answer like this is not out of the box, because this is not a data class. So I would need to override the equals function myself. And that's fine. That's an option. 
but I would prefer that this be a data class so that I can get that equals function out of the box. And now, because I'm using a data class, this is yelling at me because data classes must have at least one property. Or actually, even more specific, their primary constructor must only have properties. So, okay, we make this a property. But now I am shadowing the parent version of this. So, the last step is that I need to add the override to this. Whoops. Uh -huh. And so that's why we got where we did. So make login say a sealed interface. Um, wouldn't that result in almost the same code? I actually don't know much about sealed interfaces because I know they're new to Kotlin and I've actually never written one. Um, so I have no idea if it's better here. I want to fix this real quick. I'm going to make credentials. Um, I'm going to give this default arguments. Um, but I actually think, okay, we've added a lot, but I think that we've got something going here. So let's, let's try to roll with it some further. Um, we're going to delete this. I mean, that's, that's valid, but I don't know if there's any other, um, so sealed class defining all possible states of our login sphere. I'm also, now I can rename this to login view state. Uh, property credentials, the current credentials entered by the user. And we've got buttons enabled. If true, the buttons on the login screen can't accept clicks, false otherwise. Um, Let's be good. So actually, initial and active are the same. And I mean, they're not, but they are, right? Like their signature is the same. So do I combine them into one? Do I drop initial? Or I guess they're not because like initial is easier to create. Let's keep them separate. Um, the initial state of the screen with nothing input. Um, state of the screen as the user is entering email information. Um, the state of the screen as the user is attempting to log in. And um, state of the screen when there is an error logging in. And lastly, we've got uh, the state of the screen when the user tries to submit with invalid inputs. Okay. So we did all that. Let's go to our login content. This is all going to have to change now. Um, well, really, this will just be credentials.email uh, value. This will be credentials.password.value. And down here, um, this actually becomes one thing I will say that helps us in the compose world, Tim, is that. Uh, you know, when I've got sealed classes, my previews become a lot nicer. Because when you have data classes, to get a preview for a different state, um, that's just like, that's a lot of lines that are repeated in every preview. Um, but the sealed class makes this preview a little nicer. So like if we do a split, let's remove this. Um, then we see this preview. And actually, previews can do some cool stuff. There's a thing in Compose called a preview parameter provider where you can pass a list of items. And I suppose you could do this with data classes too. But we could create a preview function 
that takes in a list of um, login view states and then generates a preview for each one. Uh, maybe something cool we could look at. Not something that's specific to sealed classes. Definitely also possible with data classes. But one could argue like you get a little more readability with that sealed class version. Um, but I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. Um, yeah, I guess it's not, like I said, it's not s specific to sealed classes, which is why someone will call me out on that. What I just described, you can also do with... Yeah, uh, do you guys want to see it? Let's do it. Um, let me run this, make sure this preview works, and then I'll show you how you can uh, do this yourself. Um, I just need to look up... Um, The example. I get that for the screen, it makes sense. I hash out a suit class, but for screens where your data may be updated from multiple sources, having to check the type or switch on the state gets cumbersome. I, I think that's valid. Um, I think that it falls into what we uh, talk about often is like a lot of. Uh, what did I see on Twitter recently? Best practices is just a fancy word for someone's opinion, right? Like, you don't have to do things the same way every time. Um, if that makes sense. I don't need that anymore. I'm not sure why my preview's not rendering. This is classic compose happening right now. Or is this yelling at me for something else? Got a render problem. What is the render problem? Array index out of bounds exception. Where is it trying to reference an array? All right, we're going to do a clean build. And we're going to get this previous show. Matt brings up a good point, too. Yeah. So I want this to rebuild. You definitely could, right? Like, it's it's complicated, and there's no... I don't think there is a right or wrong answer to it. Um, why is this yelling at me? What is this stack trace? Okay. So this is not my fault. This is definitely a weird compose thing going on. Um, yeah, I think that that's something I struggle with when it comes to, like, clean architecture as someone who just released a video on mvvm and mvi it's like they always feel like over engineering until you are bit by the problems they're solving you don't understand how helpful they are and it's like it's over engineering today that saves you time tomorrow and that's really hard to conceptualize until you've like really been burned by it you know um I used to think, like, a lot of the things that I preach on this channel, I used to, like, not enjoy doing. Um, okay, can't figure out why the preview isn't showing up. Let's... Thank you, Matt. Let's, um... Let me show off the preview parameter provider thing, and hopefully it works. Or I don't know what I need to do. Do I want to go as far as, like, trying to restart Android Studio here? Um... Why isn't the preview working? This index out of bound things is definitely not my fault. It's definitely like a compose issue. Um, I don't know why. Um, I don't know how to fix it. Unless I try to do like an invalidate caches and restart or something. Um, I did a clean, right? Let's try that one more time. Oh, that's different. Oh my god. I am not going to enjoy this. Um, good night, Tim. I'm not going to enjoy this uh, key promoter thing. It's going to get to me. It truly is.
I just want my previews to work. Am I asking for so much? Clearly I am. Aha! The preview worked. Okay. So, here's like our mode. So, all of that said, oh my god. <laughs> How do I disable this? How do I turn it off? No pop-up. I don't care. I'll deal with it later. <laughs> I don't have time to learn today. <sighs> okay. Yeah, but it kept saying disable for this alert, and I was like, I want to disable it for everything. It's a preview parameter provider. Okay. Let's throw that in at the bottom. Maybe we could put in its own class. So we can have a login view state provider. It's something we can create. And this will be a preview parameter provider. And the type will be login view state. I'm going to close this window for now. OK, and this has two things that we. Nope, hold on. Uh, or one thing that we need to override? I thought we need to override count, too. Did they change that? Oh, they did change it. Nice. OK, we don't need to care about count. So this values, it's a sequence of states that we want to show. So let's give an example. Um, well, or we can just kind of, yeah, OK, hold on. Um, I'm just thinking of that. I'm going to create this helper. I'm going to create like active credentials, um, which will be credentials with email. Test be make test face for the password. Um, because this would be helpful. Tim suggestion of the abstract val in the sealed class as a member's variable is actually really cool. Example. Okay, I totally missed some side conversation, so let me pull that up in a second. Um, let's look at this. Um, okay, so abstract valve test. Interesting. Um, so why is this better than um, having it in the parent? I'm not really sure I see a difference. Um, maybe there's a use case. In this particular case, I don't find it necessary, but it's really good to me. You don't have to open it. Interesting. I think I would still need it for the credentials part the way I want to do it, but you're right. Um, I would lose, would I lose the, hmm. interface version? We can look at that real quick. I see. So it's actually, the interface is actually pretty much the same thing as uh, what Matt just showed. Let me think on it. Let me finish showing y'all the multi-previews in Jetpack Compose, and then um, we can go back to considering refactoring this. Um, because I want to show y'all how cool this is. So let me recap. We create a preview parameter provider of some type, right? We override values, which is a sequence of that type. I created some test credentials, but now what we're going to do is we're going to return, if I can type, a sequence of. So first we're going to have login view state dot initial. 
Uh, we're also going to show login view state that active with the active credentials. Um, we might want to show submitting, right? Which will have the active credentials. We're going to want to show um, submission error. So this would be like active credentials, something went wrong. Um, and then we could have our login view state of the input errors, which would be, actually, let me add names to these ones because this one is helpful. Uh, you know how it would go, Matt? It would go fantastic because we have the copy method. That's how it would go. by reading the copy method. But you're right, I wouldn't know what state I'm trying to... Yeah. So one funny thing about me doing all of this work, actually, is the fact that half of these states aren't covered by our login UI yet. So we're just going to see several previews that look identical, but then we can like update the UI and see them change or something. OK, so how do we use what I just showed you? Well, we add an argument in here that uh, consumes the provider. Um, so we want to take a login view state, but then we need to annotate this with preview parameter, and then we give it um, login view state provider class um the component job between the two concepts don't make a code reviewer cry oh god you guys are all so mean um okay all, all this teasing about naming conventions and you're not ready to have your mind blown about what i just showed you right um so we created that sequence we pass in the preview parameter provider. Let's do a split. We need to wait for this to rebuild. And all of a sudden, we have tons of previews that uh, have words. Um, all of our different states. So here, we've got empty login. And now we see, okay, well, this one is active here. Um, and then they're all going to look active. But wait, why is there two? Oh, there's not. I'm just at the bottom. Um, but that's because none of the error stuff is actually there. Um, actually, something interesting is... Um, Yeah, I'm surprised none of these buttons show as disabled. That sh I would have expected to have been covered. I wonder if I can rename this. Do they provide a way of getting the name? No, it doesn't look like they do. Um, yes. Ah, cheers, Trax. Um, that's a good question, Winnethan. I think there's no right answer to it. Um, I'd kind of suggest like picking something that you're passionate about. Um, but if you knew native Android, like, um, going to like native iOS or a hybrid is probably like going to be the easiest jump for you. But, uh, yeah, you can mix and match that. Or you could pick whatever works. Then. Well, cool. So after making that preview, I know we talked about... Um, what did we talk about? We talked about wanting this to be the view model PR, but I'm actually thinking of, like, renaming this uh, to, like, login view states. And now that we have, like, our other states on this, uh, why don't we reconfigure the content to 
show us that. So I think it'll be a little easier to do the error states. Um, uh, well, let's talk about let's talk about error states because we've got something interesting here. So let's say um, above the email input is that where I would put it, or would I put it after password? Where would you put an error message on this screen? If you had a problem logging in, would you put it below these two inputs? Or would you put it right above them? Maybe above them? Right, so we do like a... Oh, under password? Okay, I lied. We're doing it under password. Okay. Um, let's do some text. Text will be... So, okay, well, so this is my question. So would we do if view state is login view state dot submission error, then we could do some text. Here we would do view state dot error message. And the color here would be, ah, but I'm not using material text field unless like there is for compose. Um, but I think for Compose, we would need to add it ourselves. But I'm not talking about, like, an error entering your password. I'm talking about, like, an error signing in. Um, colors.error. Um, and let's also, we're going to throw in this error message. Let's give it a modifier. Um, let's put some spacing above it. Let's do 12 dips. Let's build and refresh. One of these view states should have an error for us, for us to see how that looks. Aha, look at that. So this one, whoops, I zoomed in too far. This one shows the text that I just added. This will show some text that gives the error message um, when something goes wrong trying to log in. Let's actually, I wonder, can I? This is actually really cool if this works, that I can, it generates all those previews and then I could run a very specific one. Um, that would be cool if that works. Yeah, really fascinating. I'm glad everyone's loving it. Um, also, holy crap, in two minutes. We are going to hit the four hour mark. This will be one of my longest streams ever. Um, which I am grateful for. That means people, or I hope that means people are enjoying this and having a good time. Um, okay. It still doesn't look great, but like it works. Um, and actually I like that it shifts all of this up. So, okay. I like the way that looks. Um, So, what was the other thing? Ah, well, we talked about wanting to be able to show errors on our text fields as well. So, that's actually a custom thing we would have to build ourselves. So, we have this TOA text field that we made. The short, if we close it all up, it's an outline text field. Um, what I think I would do is this could consume an error message. Uh, and actually what we would do then is we could take this and we could wrap it in a column, right? And then below the text field, we could put some text, which will be error message. Um, color will be, whoops, whoops, whoa, God. Color will be material theme dot colors dot error. Uh, there's a couple other ways we can clean this up a little more though. Um, actually, well, the first thing is if error message is not equal to null. I don't really like doing null checks inside my composable functions, but 
I don't hate it here. Because the option is to pass in the error message and a boolean, and do I really need both if I could just suck it up and write the null check? Um, I don't know. I think so. Um, but the other thing is, outline text field should have in its error property where we can say um, if error message is not equal to null, we want to show that, which means it will show a um, highlight on the input as well. Um, and we can demonstrate that. We've got some previews in here. Um, let's copy our filled one. Um, and let's make an error TOA text field preview. So we'll call this error. Error. Oh, I know why this unused private member was there. I think because it yells at that function. But um, anyways, so here we'll say error message. Please enter this. So now if we do a little split here, we'll have to wait for this preview to build. But I think it will show our input with um, an error message. Yeah, we just need to build and refresh real quick. Sorry, just sending a message. Um, this should be ready. Aha! So here's what the error version looks like. Maybe we could add some padding there. Let's add just like a tiny amount. Um, let's just add like more dibs. So we have a little bit of spacing, but we don't want to create a ton. So we see the preview here. Um, let's actually go back to login content and let's refresh those previews and let's see um, what that input error. Yeah, it's not so much a fear of using null, but like the if not null check just feels like there's probably a better way I could have done it. Oh, I know what I did wrong here. Um, so we've got this email input, right? Oh. I, I just remembered like 10 other things about why my previews aren't doing what I thought they were. So the first one is we've got this email input. Um, and this one is actually going to be interesting. So we're saying that email input should be able to consume an error message, which will be a string. Um, and then we'll pass that through. It'll be a nullable string. So now the question is like, well, what's the best way to get the error message? Because again, that's only available in one specific case of my sealed class. Here is how I would do it. We're gonna do view state as type safe cast login view state that input error, um, and then try to reference email input error message. So this is kind of long. But, um, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I think that I just, you're right, sometimes I just hesitate. Uh, this is kind of long, but what we're basically doing is we're saying, if we are this type, then get this property. But if at any point, if this doesn't exist, or if it's not this type, this will return null. So, and then we're going to want to do the same thing on password. Error message will be view state as login view state dot input error dot password input error message. And then of course we have to update this as well. So now that we've added it to this code, if we refresh, um then uh we should see an input error message in some of these, hopefully. Oh, look at that. Please enter an email, please enter a password. Um, I'm actually looking at this and I think that we, 
would it make more sense for this to be aligned with um like where the end of the radius starts like where the text starts um or at least like where the end of the radius is uh that might be a good idea cuz i don't like this yeah no it needs to move okay let's figure out how to do that so this is actually hard because I don't know what is our text field shape? It's around a corner shape. I don't know what this padding is. It seems like it's a system thing. Um, oh yeah, I've seen that post. As soon as I read the author, I was like, oh, I've definitely seen that. Um, I'm not sure how much space is being given here, how much padding is inside of this. Um, I don't know if we can dig into the source code to find out what it is. Um, because we basically put something here, but we need to figure out what this magic number is supposed to be. So... There's got to be a value because the text and the label add up. So let's dig into the source code. Yeah, let's let's dig in. So we're probably going to go down a bit of a rabbit hole here. Um, because we're going to go into this outline text field. And I'm just going to scroll really fast. You don't have to be confused. What I'm doing is I am scrolling until my brain sees a dimension resource that I think is relevant. Um, and I have not yet seen one until here. We're close. Okay. Well, there's some top padding. There's some min width, min height. That's not what we need. There's a decoration box, which is only if we're showing a placeholder. Got a basic text field. All right, I think I actually missed it. I think that it would have been earlier on. Um, Where did we go? Let me, where did we go? Where did we find this? Um, okay, maybe there was something in here. So we get the text color, we get some transform text, we get the input state. There's this transition, which is for the label. Um, Why can't I see, is this the decoration? Does the decoration have padding? It does not. Okay, oh God, where do we go? Um, wait, what is this? Oh, it's the modifiers where they set the error message. Um, all right, Raphael, have a good night. Thank you for coming by. Um, ah, command bracket. I knew there was a thing. Um, okay, so then I think it's in here. Um, like, this is where we have, like, shape and all this stuff. So outline text field layout feels like where I need to look. Um, yeah, that's not it. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, here we go. We've got an icons with text field layout. Um, this is calculating the label height and stuff. Um, this has like our border and stuff. Let's go in here. Aha, we're about to get somewhere. I can see it. This is the content. This is the border. We've got a box. We've got a decoration. Come on. Padding to icon. There is a text field padding. 
and it's 16 dips. I could have guessed that, but I wanted to know for sure. So let's make this 16, and let's refresh this and see how this looks. I think it'll be a little weird, uh, because, oh my god, why is it so jumpy? We can see that it, the text starts before the the arrow ends, but um, there is something supported actually, and that's uh, the trailer. There's something called a leading icon. Um. So here we could do like icons dot default dot search for example. Um, if you add a leading, there's leading icon and there's trailing icon, and then where those get used is they basically show up before the text. Uh, let me just run this to show you. I'll remove this in a second, but just like that. That's all we hit. Oh my god, why is this so jumpy? I don't know what's wrong with my Android Studio today. It's like possessed. Um, yeah, just like that. That's all we have to do to add an icon at the start or end of a text field in Compose. It's really nice that uh, that kind of comes out of the box like that. Yeah, no problem. Um, but okay, so we've got the padding. Let's go back here. Let's refresh this. Oh, that already. Oh god. Yeah, let's refresh this. Um, I find it interesting. I had to change this at my current job because... Um, okay, I'm glad I'm not alone. Uh, I had to change this at my current job for something because uh, the text color... The text color doesn't turn red. Maybe material suggests that you don't do that. Um, I don't know. But um, I'm actually thinking ahead at another weird scenario of our login view state, but I don't know if I want to get ahead of myself or not. Let's keep going with things that are relevant, um, which the only thing we changed before we want to build the view model, I guess, is um, the enabled state on the buttons. So let's do that real quick. So enabled equals view state that button's enabled. Um, enabled equals view state that button's enabled. Um, enabled boolean. Oh my god, I'm going to need to update a few pieces of code because we're passing into our own thing here. Um, but let's fix one function at a time. Secondary button, uh, enabled, boolean. We're going to default to true. Um, enabled equals enabled. We'll also probably want to update a preview for like, um, I don't know, I'll leave it. Because um, it'll be here. We should probably update these previews. You know what? I'm going to do it. Um, I'm just going to update the previews real quick while we're here. So I'm going to take this. Um, and we call this disabled. Uh, enabled equals false. And so here we can, actually before we update our login UI, we can make sure that this button when disabled looks reasonable. Um, I'm not sure what reasonable is. Uh, okay. So this, I wonder what the dis, I think it looks fine. I actually think this is using like our background color. So I'm a little worried about what this will mean um, when we see it on that screen, but let's worry about that when we get to it.
Let's do the same thing for this one. Do disabled secondary button. Um, I also learned about an interesting preview trick from Sebastiano last time I watched Coding with the Italians, is that you can have groups of previews in Compose. Um, let me show you what that means. Um, okay, this works the way I expect them to. So right now, we have all of these previews. There's two preview functions, but each of them is generating two. And we've got them in... Uh, all in the same file. But what if I wanted to only see like the enabled version? We can go here. We can call this group enabled. Um, and then we just copy that. We give it whatever string we want. And then for these two, we can paste them in here, but we can call them disabled. And then what we can do is when we refresh, um, once they're done, in this drop down, I have to wait till it's done. But now we'll have a drop down that shows the different groups. So I could filter to just only see the enabled buttons, or I can only see the disabled buttons. Um, so there's something cool you can do if you find this helpful. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Everyone will see it a little differently. Um, but all that said, now we can see the cool stuff in here. Um, we need to find our submitting state. Oh, this actually looks really good. Now the submitting state is missing the progress bar. It's missing the progress bar, but we can add that. Um, and adding that will be an interesting challenge. Um, Why do I say that? Well, our entire screen here is in a column. Now, I want my progress bar to be smack in the center of the screen. And in order to do that, I will need a box composable. And that's fine, but I don't like my composables to be super nested. So what I think I might do is take all of this stuff and throw it in a new function. Interesting perspective there. A progress bar within the submit button itself. Um, no, I absolutely think you're right, Wild Dog. There are some things that we didn't have to do that we now have to do, um, like error handling and text fields, like a lot of stuff with text fields. I'm really... Composed text fields are very powerful, yes. I don't like how much responsibility it puts on us as the developers to do. Um, it puts a lot more responsibility on us, and there's benefits to that, right? Like, we had the same problem when RecyclerView was released. Recycler view required more work on our part than list view did, but that came with having a much more powerful component in Recycler view. Um, so, but I definitely feel that. Like I think that it's it's a valid uh, piece of feedback there. Um, but okay, interesting. The idea of putting it on the buttons. I was thinking about putting it right in the middle of the screen because that's what I'm used to seeing. Um, I don't know if I would put it left of the text. I can see myself putting it, like, over the text or something. I don't know, I think middle of the screen makes sense. Or, I'm wondering if there's other another way we could simulate loading. The reason I'm stressing out is because, like, I if I want to make it a box, I want to, like, put this out into its own function. Call it like logo inputs column or something. Let's go down that rabbit hole first, and then maybe we could refactor like the loading indication in the future if we have a better way. So let's 
um, pull this out. Um, let's call it logo inputs column. We're just gonna, I know that's not like super clear, but let's roll with it. So, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this inside of a box. Siblings within a box. I don't think I need animated visibility for what I want to do here. Um, well, maybe if I want the progress bar to like animate in, but um, but so here, so we've got a box, we've got this. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a circular progress indicator. Um, on top of everything. But uh, because I've been bit by this in the past, one thing I know is um, we want this to be wrap content size, and then we also want to do align alignment.center. So let's build and refresh this. Yeah. There's a there's our circular progress indicator, even though that's not the real one. A box is it's most in a, uh comparable to a frame layout. It's just a composable that you can put everything in, and it draws the lower items first. Um but it allows you to align things, not to each other, but within the box. So you can align to the center of the box, the top left, right of the box, and stuff like that. So in this case, where I have two things that I want layered on top of each other, and I want to align one in the center of the entire screen, box is really good for that. Ooh, Matt out here decompiling code. And we can see, even though the preview doesn't really show it, like, we can see the circular progress indicator is there. Uh, we could run this on our emulator if we want to see what our loading state actually looks like. But uh, it's working. Holy crap, it's 11 o'clock. Um, all of you staying up late. But this has been like one of the best streams. We've done so much stuff today. I love it. Um, maybe we can do just a little bit more. Um, we'll see. Yeah, look at that. So it's not great, right? Like, and it's not, it looks weird with the logo being right there, but it's something. I think that a future stream, we could definitely change this, but uh, what I like is that we have something that works here today. Um, I think that's really good. So let's push all of this up. Um, updating. Is this where we changed everything to field class? Yeah. Login view state. To sealed class. And updating the UI. <laughs> that uh, accordingly. Uh, no, actually, I should fix that, like, right now. Um, that's something we're going to need to do eventually. Let's add that, because that's actually pretty quick. So, do 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 do, do. Um, I'm going to wait for everything to commit. Everything's going slow, because I have so many previews now. Uh, maybe that was not the best idea. Um, but our outline text field can consume something called a visibility transformation. So, I think that's what it's called. What is it called? Visual transformation. Oh my god, I can't type. So we're going to consume a visual transformation. We're going to default to visual transformation at none, uh, but we'll proxy this through 
uh, with everything else. And so what this allows us to do is in our login content, where we create the password input, we can give this a visual transformation of password visual transformation. And what this will do is um, this will replace, why did that fail? I don't know, we'll worry about it with the next commit. Um, this will replace everywhere that we have text with dots. Oh, super easy. And you can write your own. So I read a really great post on like how you could write your own visual transformation to do like phone number masking or uh, like hiding a credit card with hyphens instead of dots or something. Um, aha. And there we go. There are our dots. Um, actually, with our urbanist font style, that's not... I, I don't like that. Well, why are they so small um, and so close together? Uh, maybe we'll play with typography. Um, look at those little dots. You have to zoom in, like, so far just to see that. <laughs> why is it doing that? I don't, I don't know if it would actually show up like that. This feels like a preview thing. <laughs> Your password must be 0.5 characters long. I'm running this on emulator. So, as much as I would love to keep streaming, I guess we'll see where we're at. Wow, it really is small. Okay, I'm going to ignore that for today. Uh, that will be uh, a future, future concern. Uh, but let's commit this code then, uh, adding password visual transformation. Um, and then I don't know if we'll hook up the screen to a view model, but um, you can. You can replace them with every with whatever you want, and that's working. Uh, I think it's an issue with the typography. Um, I can show you how it works real quick. Um, actually, before I show you how it works, let me figure out why um, this didn't push last time. It looks like we had some static analysis issues. Oh my god, right, this yells at me. I removed this, that was my fault. I should just turn off that check. Ah, Asheroth, thank you for the follow. <laughs> Ant visual transformation, yes. Um, Okay, once this pushes, I will show you how it works, which I think it's trying to do. Um, oh my god, yeah, everything's just a little slow right now. I don't know if it's all of the previews or what. Uh, close other tabs is what I'm going to do. Okay, so where were we? We were in password input. Password visual transformation. Uh, its functionality is as easy as it sounds. So it takes in a mask, which is um, basically what you want to replace it with. So this is the Unicode character for like an asterisk. And then this filter function says, okay, give me the text that you already have and I will return you the transform text. So it creates this transform text, and all it does is it takes that mask character and it repeats it for the length of our string. So if our password is 10 characters, this is just going to give us 10 asterisks. So uh, what someone said, WebShark, yeah, this is basically just replacing it with Unicode. Um, now it's like the transform text, right? So it knows what was there underneath, you don't have to worry about that, but this is what it's going to show up as to the user. So the fact that it's so small tells me that I could probably do something with a better font size, or maybe even letter spacing, or something with my typography, 
uh, could be improved upon for the asterisk. At least that's my thought process. Or maybe I want to try a different mask. You know, like um, I think that's an asterisk. So what's bullet asking him? Um, how do I find this bullet point asking? I know this is a thing. Um, I can't find what the, I can copy it here, but it won't tell me, oh, this is read only. Can I do that? It might work. Um, let's see if that's any better than what we already had. Wait, did that fail to push again, or was that an old message? It failed to push again. We'll figure out why after. Yeah, okay, it's still super small. So it's definitely a typography thing. We'll worry about that on another stream. Um, let's send this back real quick. Um, why? Why did it fail? I just want to talk. Why are you failing? Long parameter list. Um... That's fair, but I can't make this any smaller. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to suppress for this case, because I think for this case, it's OK. Um, or actually, what I might do differently. So detect, we've mentioned, is highly configurable, right? And the long parameter list option gives me a chance to say, ignore default parameters. And I think for that, I'm going to say, OK. Um, this is opinionated, of course. But I'm going to say, like, look, if I've got a lot of default parameters, I don't really care how long the list is. But if I've got a lot that aren't defaults, then maybe I'm doing something wrong. So let's go with that. Um, detect requirement. 